Hey guys, so in this video we are going to talk about the basics of CSS Grid, Flexbox and BEM. So let's get into it. We will cover what BEM is, why BEM is useful, what Flexbox is and why Flexbox is useful, what CS Grid, CSS Grid is and why that is useful. And just th these are my personal thoughts. These three tools together are the three most important things that you can learn in order to be a true master of CSS at this point in time. They are extremely powerful and I have a few examples here that I hope will illustrate the different types of use cases and hopefully a little bit of the mentality behind using them. Like the specifics exactly how everything works that you can read somewhere else. This is about mindset and use cases. Let's get into it guys. So first and foremost, BEM. This is BEM. So the thing with BEM is that it stands for Block Element Modifier and all it is is a naming convention. And the reason why this naming convention is so useful is because one of the biggest problems that you will face as you work your way through CSS is that you will find that you have all these rules and all these names and all these issues with names and collisions and CSS mutations and all of this bullshit that you don't want to deal with, but which unfortunately gets really, really tricky really, really quickly. It's even at a mid-sized project you will have a lot of issues with CSS. BEM is not the only thing out there. There's a few other methodologies, methodologies, but BEM is my favorite one. And the reason why it's my favorite one is because it solves these issues in a very easy, elegant manner. The basics is very simple. So you have a component, a natural component that you identify. Let's say that you have a panel, or in this case, you have this top level div, which is called a block. So this can be anything. It could be your nav bar, it can be your panel, it can be whatever you want it to be basically. It's a block that you declare at the top and inside you have children that make up the component, right? So that's the first thing. That's the namespace. So you put a class that is just named after the thing that you want to create. And then inside, for all the children, you simply do underscore underscore and then you do element. It's almost like it, it's it's basically a way to express object-oriented programming. You have a container or a class and inside you have field variables and you use underscore underscore to indicate that this is a child of that class or that block in this case. And then finally you have the modifier which is basically when let's say that you had a list item that when you hover it you want it to switch from being the base style to being active. That's where this comes in. So you indicate that hey I want you to have, I, I just want to briefly switch the, or I want to switch this to an active state or some other state and I, you know, you annotate this with dash dash to indicate that hey, this is just a mutation of the, or the 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 base block or the base state basically. And so, you could do all kinds of things with with I, basically this scales to the point where I can't even describe it. Like this thing here, this is perfect. So, you will have a form, and then you may have a form mutator or a, 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 like a yeah, some type of mutator and you can have several mutators and then you can have the and I, you, just by reading this styling I can immediately understand that okay so it's a form it has an input of one or many more inputs and it has a submit of some sort and then it has a mutator a modifier for for the submit that's it from just reading this I can actually understand this HTML I didn't even have to look at it I knew what the styles were the, these two are reflections of each other. I love it. I absolutely love it. So, enough ranting about BEM. BEM is useful because it will allow you to work in any web project and it will scale to any size. I have used this personally at one of the world's largest companies with one of the largest code bases in the, and it, it, it works absolutely beautiful. It is, it is perfect. Anywho, let's get on to Flexbox. So one of the biggest things about Flexbox that I absolutely love is that it allows me to center things. And 
that was a big problem back in the day. Let's just I'll just scroll through the HTML because it's not as as interesting as you may think. And then let's just scroll through the CSS here as well. So that you have something I even have some dead code there that I don't use. Anywho, this is just a static page with some boxes and the way that I have made this design, if you are coming in without using Flexbox or something like that, you might ask, how is it that I achieve this layout? Because I have a perfect distribution between the elements, even though they're different lengths, and there's one element that is a little bit high, like it has a high, it has more height than the rest of the element. This is a perfect use case for Flexbox, and it's exactly what I've used. So by declaring flex, if I remove it, it's going to break the whole thing, right? By saying flex, and then I justify the content with space between, I can actually tell Flexbox that, hey, I want you to arrange all of these items as a row, and then I want to justify everything with some space between. So even to distribute all of the stuff that you find inside of this container or this notice header, so that so that they are spread out evenly across my across this uh, across the row basically, and then I use align items because I want to align everything. Because as you can see, because one element is actually higher than the other elements, but I can actually tell Flexbox, hey. Just make sure that you know. Just make sure that everything is on one line in uh, aligned on one line. Now, this is one of the most powerful use cases for Flexbox, in my opinion. I, I, I this is rather my the most common one I use it for, and it used to be the case that I had to like do padding and I had to do, figure out different pixel uh, pixel heights and stuff of that nature in order to center and damp sorry, an image next to the text. It wasn't all that long ago. You had to really know your stuff in order to do this in an effective manner. And today, that's not no longer the case. I absolutely love Flexbox. Just for that one reason, that alone is enough to just make me go, wow, I really love you. All right, let's move on to the next example that I hope will illustrate something that I think is fairly useful. We have a little bit of uh, JavaScript here as well. So we have this, some basic HTML, we have a list, and we have some JavaScript that will append a lot of elements to this list. So let's look at the effect here. Let's actually remove these things here. So here we have a bunch of numbers and boxes, basically. and What's beautiful about this is that what Flexbox will do, the, well, it, it's this is a fairly common use case. The this is a little bit to illustrate the differences between Flexbox and CSS Grid because a lot of people get very confused between okay, when do I use Flexbox and when do I use CSS Grid? And the best mindset that I can give you to use when you want to know which one you use is that Flexbox was designed to work in one dimension. In other words, if you have a row of things, you want to use Flexbox, or a column of things, you want to use Flexbox. If you have two dimensions, if you are working on both the x-axis and the y-axis in your layout, you want to use CSS Grid. Now you may think that, oh, isn't this CSS Grid? Well, no, it's actually not. And do you know why? Because Flexbox actually has, this is just one big line, this is just one big block that I have set through Flexbox, through Flexbox to wrap when it reaches basically the, the threshold of the side here. So all these elements are just on one big line. So let's, let's, let's actually do a mobile thing here because we want a multiple of four so that everything lines up nicely. Here we are. All these elements is just one big line. If you have a really, really wide screen, it's going to, yeah, as you can see, it's just going to keep on flexing in in one continuous line. Let's see if we can make that a little bit bigger so that you see how this is. Yeah, as you can see, it's fully responsive. I, yeah, it's just beautiful. It is just beautiful. Let's actually inspect this element here. So. The list, all it is, is that I've set the display to flex, 
and flex wrap to wrap. That's it. I can do flex direction, for example, and do column instead, and all of a sudden, hey, everything is in one long column. So that is the way that I like to think about Flexbox. Flexbox is perfect for laying out elements in a nice layout when they just want to be on one laid out in one direction. Right, now let's go on to the next part. Let's have a look at, well, actually just scroll through the CSS as well so you can just get a screenshot, a screenshot grab of that. Let's look at Holy Grail. So Holy Grail, what the hell do I mean by Holy Grail? So the Holy Grail was a concept that was used back in the day, which basically meant that you had a header, two sidebars, two sidebars, one or two at least, and a middle section with some content and a footer. Now this layout was surprisingly hard to get responsive and nice looking, but with CSS Grid, it is trivial, trivial, trivial stuff. So here we have a main element, we have a nav and a side, a div that holds the content, a right sidebar and a footer. Let's just very quickly go through the the styling here. And yeah, that's basic that this is all the CSS that is needed to 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 do this basically. I have almost nothing there. For the seniors out there, you may recall how tricky, how much more CSS, and uh, for those of you who use Flexbox for this, it requires more than a few lines of, more, let's just say more code than, than this. And this is why I absolutely love Flexbox. Oh, sorry, no, CSS Grid. So here is the layout. So you have a header section, a content section, a sidebar, another sidebar, and the footer. That's it. And all you're doing is you see you, you just use CSS grid for it. And the best part is that it is completely responsive. How amazing is this? I mean, good God, I am so I love this. I absolutely love it. So let's look at the grid. Do you see you can see these grid lines here that come out. So you can see that there's actually three columns and three three rows. And using CSS Grid, we can see here that, all right, so I've set the container to be display grid. I set the height to 100% view height. So for those of you, because if I remove that, hey, there's not going to be, because there's no content, there's not going to be a height. So I just enforce that the height is going to always be the height of the page. And then I have temp template areas. Basically, template areas allow me, me to, you may have noticed earlier that I actually have declare this little property here, grid area. And that's a way that I name an element so that, I, uh, that the grid knows how to identify this element. And the other ones have their own names. So what that allows me to do is to say that, hey, I'm going to put up a grid here. And the first row, I want the first row to have two call. I want the nav bar to stretch over. Um, actually, this might be nicer in my CSS because it's a little bit easier to, to see here. So. What I'm saying here is that row number one, make that navbar, navbar, navbar. That basically translates into, hey, stretch the navbar element across all of the columns on the first row. And then I go to row number two and I say, hey, put left add bar first and then main content and then right add bar. And then I say the same thing for the footer on row three, stretch footer over three columns. And then I can declare a template column layout like this. So one fraction, four fraction, one fraction. Basically what that means is that, hey, Flexbox, oh, sorry, CSS Grid is going to look at the total width of the page and say, all right, I have three columns and whatever the width is, just evenly distributed based on the specification. So the content area or the middle area will be four times as wide as the side areas or the side columns. And the same thing goes for, for the rows. Basically, it's that's that's how simple it is. I mean, just wow. I'm sorry. I get a little bit excited about this because I don't think uh, if you if you are not excited about this, you don't know how powerful full this layout system is just yet. But trust me, start using it, and you will get excited as well. I promise. Let's remove the holy gray and let's look at GitHub. Now this, I w it was actually a very inspiring piece of uh, 
content that I found on a very nice article I'll show you in just a moment so that that kind of illustrates in a very nice way at least I found it was, was very nice to how powerful CSS grid can actually get so basically what we have here is a is the layout that you will uh, you if um, it's gonna be interesting to see if you recognize the recognize this component from somewhere I just want to show you the styling and like the code so that you can pause the video or whatever you want to do and actually check out what's ever going on here and then let's look at this so this is the link to the art to the article the author is really really good. I, I, I think that this was a very nice illustration of a lot of different nice concepts but I just want to touch on CSS grid because hey this video is about hyping CSS grid flexbox and BAM and as you can see here, I actually use the naming conventions in order to, to kind of illustrate my point. So here, for example, we have a, we know that this element here, this style here, is going to be inside of graph, and it's going to be inside of days, whatever that element is, and it's going to be a list item inside, of, and it's going to in, indicate a list item, basically. And here we have a modifier, which is like, graph squares and list items so there's a list item inside of squares inside of graph and it's going to set something to light green now this is a single don't get confused by this single underscore this is just me doing something instead of doing that I'm doing that so that's just me don't don't that's that has nothing to do with BEM anywho these are the styles so let's have a look at the last layout do you recognize it well, for those of you who haven't been, who don't have a GitHub account, this is actually the, the, if you go to your profile, you will actually see this graph, or, well, whatever you want to call it. Now, this isn't responsive or anything like this, but it, I think it's a really nice way of illustrating how powerful Flexbox actually, is, uh, CSS Grid actually is. Notice that the, the top of this is actually, like, we have two columns, the and uh, oh sorry I get I get excited I am sorry but there's two columns here basically you have this you have this this uh, column here with basically the months and the commits that you've done for these different like basically for the months and then you have this days area here which indicates which days you've done which commit and so forth. And finally, you have this. Basically, I can't target that now, as, I, as far as I can see. But you see that top left box there. That's just an element that you can actually add to Flexbox. You can actually describe. Oh, sorry, not not add in Flexbox, but in CSS Grid, you can actually, as you can see here in the template areas, you can actually declare something to be empty. So you can actually add add white space to your layout without having to put an element in there if you wanted to do that with you know in theory you could do the top row there with all the months in in flexbox but you would have to add a shadow element or you would have to use padding or something like that and flexbox doesn't need that it can do it much in a much simpler manner now apart from this cool styling here you can use CS grid for nested elements this is also a grid and this is a grid and finally of course this is a grid I mean uh, I don't know about you but I get really really excited by about Flexbox when I see people do these sort of layouts that used to be so complicated and require so much HTML and so much CSS to achieve and you can do it with just a fraction of the styling so if nothing else if if nothing else at all at the very least, Flexbox and CSS Grid and these elements, uh, th th these styling conventions, these CSS tools, allow you to do things in an easier fashion. It makes at least my life much easier. Hopefully, this video has inspired you to try these techniques out and read up on them. Because I, th honestly, from me to you, I think that this is going to be big, big, big stuff going forward. I would say that if it's not already the standard yeah, because it's supported in almost all the browsers I think that this is one of the biggest innovations to come to CSS in I don't know how long so I hope you're excited and I hope you have a great day